Shalom, Yasharala. I want to start off by giving all praises to our power, Yahweh, and to our great king and our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give double honors to our elders who rule well and teach well. All right. I just want to jump off in this and um, edify Yasharala and people that's probably still in that Christianity doctrine that's of the elect to let them know, man, the law was never done away with. And the scriptures don't contradict each other. They co coincide each other. For from, from the book of Genesis to Re Revelations, the, book, the scriptures coincide with each other. You can't use the New Testament to combat the Old Testament. And you can't use Paul teachings to combat the man of the world. It recalls Christ's teachings. You know? So the scriptures coincide with each other. That's where we get the word precept. Because the scriptures back up other scriptures. So let's jump right into this. This is Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. The Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. All right? And that's basically saying, man, the, the Most High don't make mistakes, man. Everything, all his doings are perfect, man. Okay? He's perfect in everything he does. He's not going to do something and change his mind. If he tell you, it's, a, it's an abomination to be a faggot. If it's an abomination for you, for a man to go on another man's rectum and get a man's feces on him, and that's an abomination, and, and, and it's punishable by death, he's not going to change his mind thousands of years down the road and say, oh, that's not an abomination no more, you can do that. So that's the same thing with food. If he tell you it's an abomination to eat a pig, he's not going to go thousands of years down the uh down the uh road and tell you oh well since my my son died for you now y'all can eat pig man that's a that's a uh a, a bipolar doctrine man that's a hell doctrine that that's trying to make the most high out to be a lot of a liar and and and, and uh a bipolar um individual you know somebody that's changing their mind going crazy man our, 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 our power is perfect in all his ways, man. Let me give another scripture, another precept to back that up. This is um, Malachi 3 and 6. Okay. Uh, the Most High, this is Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Most High, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay. That's plain, man. He telling you, man, like, I hate to sound redundant, but this is a precept to bag that up. The Most High does not change his mind. If, if a faggot is an abomination to him in the beginning, a faggot is always an abomination to him forever. That's the reason Solomon Gomorrah was, uh, was destroyed. You know what I'm saying? And he's always, from Genesis to Revelation, he tell you a faggot, a homosexual, not enter the kingdom of heaven. All right, in the beginning, when he gave the children of Israel those Levitical laws, he say certain things you can't, you can't eat. And the, and those are uh, and those things are abomination to him. You know, abomination is a strong word, man. It, that's a strong word. That abomination means vile, man, perverse, disgusting. All right. So, it, it, the Most High is not going to say, on one hand, this is vile and disgusting to me, and then turn around and say, oh, it's not vile and disgusting to me no more. You can eat this. All right. That's an issue of doctrine. The Most High is not crazy. That's an issue of doctrine. That's an issue. Of, that that issue is how you were taught from when you was a child and you believed. Okay, the scriptures don't say that at all. All right, this is a Leviticus eleven forty chapter eleven verse forty two. Whatso go whatsoever go up on the belly, and whatsoever go up on all four, or whatsoever have more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth. Them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Okay? Now, when the Most High said this and put this commandment in the earth, put this law on the earth, he mean that forever for a perpetual covenant. You never, he said, so the, let me give you an example of creeping things. Things like crabs, uh, down south, mud bugs, crawfish, shrimp, things like that. He said, they are abomination to you. Okay? So, red lobster, that's an abominational building. The Most High is going to burn red lobster up and all these seafood places up. Hit the children of Israel, the sons of God, the prince of the powers. We are not supposed to eat stuff like that. Those things defile our temple. 
All right? If, if it was an abomination to him then, it's an abomination to him now, man. All right? Now, let me go to a scripture where uh, Christianity uses to bag up that the law is done away with. You got to read scripture in its, its proper perspective. And the most high have to be dealing with you at the same time, too. You know? But Christians love going to the book of uh, Colossians, Colossians. But this is the lot of a prophet. The lot of a prophet is to tear down strongholds and to teach the truth, man. Scream the truth from the mountaintops. You know? And go out there and fish for the elect. Tell the elect the truth. All right. And I'm gonna start off at verse 13. And you, this Colossians two, chapter 2, verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgive you all your trespasses. And that's basically saying, man, uh, when you're un, un, you were uncircumcising your flesh, man. Your heart got to be circumcised first. So for you to get circumcised, you have to believe in the Messiah, the Messiah. You have to believe in Christ, the, um, the man in the, the world, the world England calls Jesus, that he, he's our redeemer, and um, he, he's, he's who our salvation comes to. You have to believe that. That's what circumcises your heart. All right. Verse 14, this is the point I wanted to get to. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. And what's the handwriting and ordinances that was against us? The death that comes with the law. All right? According to the law, sin, um, the wages of sin is death. Okay? So if you got caught in adultery, according to the law, you're supposed to be put to death. All right? But when Yahweh came on the scene, he knew none of us could keep that law perfectly. So the, hence the scripture of Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Okay? And, and and instead of the the death, the penalty of the law being there, we were put under grace. All right? That's the ordinance that was against us, the, the penalty of death. And let me give you an example in the scriptures to show you. This, this, this example in the scriptures to show you what was going on there. This is uh, John uh, chapter... Uh, John chapter 8 I'm going to read John chapter 8 verses 4 through 11 And this example of the handwritings That was against us But how Yahweh shot when he came on the scene Instead of us dying We had grace All right. According to the law you get caught in adultery You're supposed to be put to death All right. This is uh, John chapter 8 verse 4 They say unto him Master and they being the Pharisees Those wicked hypocrites This woman was taken in adultery in the very act Now Moses in our law and the law commanded us, all right? Those are, that's what the book of Colossians was talking about. This is the handwritings that was against us. That such should be stoned. But what does thou say? All right? And this Yahweh, you know, he came here to give us grace and not death. This they, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Yahweh stu stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Because he knew that all of them were hypocrites, and they they coming to stone her. They doing the same thing because all those Pharisees was hypocrites. That's why hence he say, let none of no man judge you. You know what I'm saying? Because they hypocrites. They don't believe in me. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted of their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the elders even unto the last and Yahweh was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Yahweh had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her woman where are thine accusers and have none man commend, uh, condemned thee and she said no man no man lord and Yahweh said unto her neither do I commend thee Go and sin no more. Okay. Now let's go back to the book of Colossians. Now in that scripture, you see the perfect example of grace and the handwritings that was against us taking no effect. 
because she uh, the handwriting that was against us, the handwriting orders that was against us, she was supposed to be put to death. But that's the beautiful thing about Yahweh when he came and died with died for us. We he came to give us grace. You see what I'm saying? Because in these human bodies, these chains of darkness, we are prone to go off. All right. So that's a perfect example. But that's not saying that the law thou should not commit adultery is not going away. All right. And that's what Christians use this scripture to say. Oh, well, uh, those orders that was against us, that were contrary to us, they are nailed to the cross. We don't have to follow them nowhere. So if that was the case, that means she could commit adultery all, all she wants. That's not what they're saying. The death that comes with the law is, is taken away from us. We are put under grace. And also, the other thing that's nailed to the cross is the slaying of beasts. You don't have to kill if you sin. You don't have to kill a bullock. You don't have to kill a sheep. You don't have to kill a goat or a turtle dove. You see? All you have to do is go to the, the throne of grace boldly and ask for forgiveness. Okay? Now let me go to Colossians 2 and 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, trying umphony over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you and me. And that's what happened over there with that woman that was committing an adultery. She, you had people that did not let me finish it so let me finish the whole scripture so I can break it down better let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or the new moon or the sabbath days okay now listen that's what happened with that lady in adultery alright those Pharisees this was, this is what Paul's telling telling the the, uh, the children of Israel um, they're living in Colossians in Colossia he's telling them don't let nobody that don't believe in Christ come and um, judge you because those Pharisees and Sadducees didn't believe in Christ, but they were, they were of the law. They were of the circumcision. And back in those days, those people of the circumcision would come to the Gentiles and try to push the law on them. All right. But they didn't believe in Yahweh So if you don't believe in Yahweh uh the man the world ignorantly calls Jesus, you following the law is vain. I mean, like, let me, let me give you an example. Like, Niggas that go to um that convert to Islam, they follow those Le Levitical laws to the teeth. They don't eat pork, you know what I'm saying? They don't be around their woman when she's on her, her period. They follow those laws to a T. But that's in vain because they don't believe in the Messiah. They gonna get the same judgment that a faggot gets. You see what I'm saying? And that's what Paul was telling the Colossians. He said, "Don't let nobody come uh, checking you about the law, and they don't believe in Christ." All right. That that's what he was saying. Let none of them joy, don't don't let none of them judge you. They have no place to judge you. You could judge them. You believe in the Messiah. Your heart is circumcised. Their heart is not circumcised. And that's what Paul was saying, man. He Paul, but Paul when when tell them, oh, you can eat pork. You could go uh be a faggot. But he he's not telling them the law is done away with. He's just telling you, don't let the people of the law, the people of the circumcision come judge you because they have no right to judge you when they don't believe in the Messiah. Now, let me give you some more precepts just to prove, you know, the law has never been null and void, man. In fact, this is a last day prophecy. This is a prophecy uh, by the prophet Jeremiah when he come back, you know, and this going to cut just cut all that Christianity shit, that bullshit they teach, man. I mean, cause uh, in the in the Book of Romans, Romans seven and eight, it say, "Well, there's no law, there's no transgression." I mean, that's plain, man. You know, I could go get that after I read this. This is Jeremiah thirty-one. Now, this is an end of time. Pro in fact, it's not just an end of time prophecy. This is our new covenant. This is what we're striving for. If you say you're a Christian, this is what you're striving for. This, this is what you're living for. This is what you're following Christ for. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, said the Most High, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay? Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, Although I was in husband unto them, says the Most High. All right, this let you know. This is this is the renewed covenant. This is an end of time prophecy. Okay, but this shall be the covenant.